Still looking for a flip bookmaker for your digital marketing materials? Today, we're gonna to take a peek at Flip HTML5 and see if this could be the next platform in your marketing toolbox. Flip HTML5 will let you convert PDFs into digital flip books, or you can actually edit templates to create your materials right inside the platform. It also offers AI elements where you can enhance text and jittery images. You can add AI chatbots and of course, links, videos, and more. The best part is if you wanna test out what you see today, you can get started for free. Before we get started, my name is Michelle and I've been in the marketing game for close to 20 years now and I love to share what I've learned and the tools that I use with other entrepreneurs. So if this info resonates with you or if you find it helpful, please give the video a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments. All right, let's take a look at Flip HTML5. All right, quick look at the landing page for flipHTML5.com. I will leave the link in the description just so that you can have uh, easy access to it. Uh, this is just giving a few of the highlights of what it can do. I did want to call out those AI tools about chat box links, videos. You can edit and create documents right inside the platform so that if you do need help with like generating, you know, ideas for text or generating some AI images. That is all features that are part of Flip HTML5. Pricing is actually really good and you can get started for free. Like I had mentioned in the intro, you don't have to add a credit card to get started. So it'll allow you to do five uploads per day. The only thing is, is that you've got six pre-designed layouts versus like the next tier, which has 22. There's a few more features, obviously, with unlimited uploads for $12.50 a month, billed yearly at $150. So still decent for budget-wise. If you want to test this out just to see if this will work for you, love that it has a free tier. So you're not here to look at all of these plans. Let's get started by signing in. Now that I'm logged in, I am on the dashboard and I can see that I've got a lot of options here uh, from the jump. So if I wanted to upload a PDF that I have, I'm gonna go that route. If I have multiple things that I wanna upload, I can use this batch upload option. I can create from scratch, like I said, and this is all really interesting, creating a chattable book. If there is anything in this video that you're like, dang it, I wish you would have talked more about that, please let me know what that is in the comments. Um, I, I'll just say like, if I went through every little feature, I would, this would be like a two hour video plus. So nobody has time to sit through all of that, right? So we're just gonna go with the basics. Now, we also have templates down here that we can review and look at if we want to get started with something. So like, let's say that we were gonna do a newspaper and we wanted to just have a template to get started with, we could choose one of these guys down here and just start getting rolling with that. I do have a, a PDF that I'm going to upload. It's an old, old magazine. So let me find that file now. Okay, we can see that this is an old Bon Appetit magazine. I think it's from like 2015, October 2015 to be exact. It's gonna import that file name right into the title. So if that's something that you would rather not have uh, all crazy, like I'm just gonna simplify it. We're just gonna leave it as Bon Appetit and we could add a description if we need to. Now, if you wanna add a label, this is kind of a, a fun feature. You have the ability to add a label, but just do note that it's not gonna show uh, on the cover, only when it's on the dashboard in the bookcase or on the Explorer page. So if you're not seeing it there, that's why. But do you know you could add a new hot or featured label to it if there was an extra call out that you wanted to do. Now let's get into the customization of this for design. Now there's going to be so many different settings here, but uh, of some of the basic ones or things that you're gonna wanna have is like the preview next button. That was that little button on the side that went away. I think that's always a good thing to have for navigation. You can also have that on mobile if that is something that you want to add that might, you know, make it a little bit smaller when you're navigating on mobile. If you love the sound of flipping pages, you can add that. You could disable the right click menu of the browser. You can also show the page numbers in the URL. So like as you're navigating online, that's just a, another helpful way that if you wanted to shortcut, you can add that page number and you can, 
navigate that way. In addition to like sliding this and uh, just clicking forward or backwards. Now you also have the ability to add Google Analytics. I love that. I think that having analytics is super important. Love Google Analytics. I would highly recommend adding those in so that you can get a real good sense of how many people are utilizing your content. If you wanna add a logo, you have the ability to add that. I'll just add one real quick there. Do know that it has a pixel size preference. If you upload anything over 500 pixels, it won't like that. You could add your own URL here. It could just be yourpage.com as an example. If you want that to open up in a new tab, if you want the padding around all that logo, these are all settings that you have for that. Background settings, you can do a solid color. You can also do a gradient. We love a gradient. So let's do, let's choose like a blue color here and then hit okay so that we can see that. And then that's slowly fading into a gray. If you want to adjust those gradient settings or adjust opacity, or even just fill in the background with a complete, you know, solid image file that you have, those are all things that you can do. Dynamic background, this, this could be a lot, but it's an option if you need it. Well, what's light rain look like? So <laughs> if you wanna add a little bit of animation to your PDFs, then you've got lots of different options here, including a spaceship. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, so do know that this, that's actually something I haven't seen in some of the other platforms that I've tested out. So that's that's definitely an interesting addition. Flip page setting. This is all about, you know, what direction you want the pages to flip. If you would rather have it go from right to left, page flip time, banning the flip from the page corner. So the, the flip time there, that 0.3, which I'm assuming is seconds, uh, it's really quick. If you wanted to slow that down, if that felt so fast to you, let's just, make it a lot slower and see what happens. See, there we go. So if that was too slow, we can make those adjustments. Yeah, that feels, that feels fine. Page display, page display. A lot of these settings are just really getting down into the, the weeds of what kind of experience you want your users to have. And especially like preloading of like the font size, the text, the, the preloader, background colors and the the load time lots and lots of little settings that you have the ability to really customize this experience for what you want it to be and though I'm not going to go through everything you know let's just go high level shadow settings cover settings appearance settings the page numbering the book margins the book margins on mobile instruction settings on mobile mini mode settings large logo settings you can add even you have embed settings and then you've got google adsense that you can connect to this you've got chatbot settings if you want to add an icon there accessibility settings this i would highly recommend making sure we always want our content to be as accessible to everyone so this is a very cool feature that I would recommend turning on so that anybody out there who has a disability can also get the benefits of enjoying your content. Okay, that's all in the design. We haven't even hit anything theme-wise yet. If you, right now we're looking at the popular layout here and they've got other ones too. So this is mo mostly just regarding layout and styling. So I'm going to apply this classical and you can see that things are a little bit, you know, chunkier. There's our logo down there. It's dark, but it's there. It's just a little placeholder guy that I created. Uh, if this is more of like a square, these are all, of course, that covers it and it's, it's a little bit more um, visible. If you'd like it to be more subtle, you might choose something else, uh, a different theme that isn't as 
blocky, you know, as it covers the content. So that would be a good solution to that. So they have several, lots, lots and lots that you can choose from. You can poke around and obviously whatever the style feels best to you, I would encourage going with. The navigate tab is going to have information for you to add table of contents so that if you want to add sort of that navigation element into your document, you can. You've got a My Designs, which is uh, actually a library that you can quickly configure for your flips for future books or PDF or marketing content that you're adding. For branding, we can go back and we can see that we've uploaded our logo. If we needed to change it, we could. It's got those recommendations for dimensions. It's not gonna let you upload anything that has over 500 pixels. And then if you need to adjust margins or height or anything like that, you can do that with these settings right here. For sharing, it's going to generate an automatic URL for your book link. Another option that you could utilize is embedding it on a website. And so if we click this embed, we're going to be given HTML code that we can put on our website wherever we want this flipbook to be so that we can actually place it right inside of our website. You can choose for it to be responsive or you could set direct widths and heights. You can do a custom width and height if you want to. I would always just recommend doing the responsive one so that you know that you're going to have a good experience. I, which which reminds me that we've got this little option up here. We're, we're in desktop mode now, but if we needed to see what it was like in tablet or even in mobile, what that experience is like, we can always toggle through these just so that we know what kind of experience the user is getting on different devices. It's always good to sort of check on that. And so if that helps you sort of figure out, you know, what would be best for your iframe. Under the monetize, we do have ad banners and Google AdSense, digital sales. So these are all things that you could utilize your book for. So if you were going to sell this for a price in the digital sales, like you would insert that and you could, you could sell this publication on your website. You could also just choose to have it available for free. Visibility, you do have the ability to make this just public for anybody to read if you want this to be private. So let's say you're using this for marketing materials and it was just for members. It was information for members and we wanted to make sure that not just anybody could read it, then that would be an instance where we might want to have it private or private with a password or you know requiring email verification in order to access. You'll also have the ability to review statistics here. And so you'll get anytime somebody views or interacts with your publication, you'll be able to collect that information. In the accessibility, it looks like you, the only option is to either toggle it on or off. And that really just helps people with visual impairments in larger content or listen to a portion of it. There's also a few more features here, one of those being forms. And so you could create a form for your, to put inside your publication so that if you were trying to collect information or was trying to like get information from your viewers, that would be something that you could put in there. So lots and lots of options. If I go into the editor, then I have the ability to show you really page by page what we could do. I might just flip through some of this. If we, for example, this has got some space for us. So I just want to show you how easy it is to put content in. And so I have the ability to add a video if I want to. I'm just going to embed. You can do a video link, a Vimeo, a YouTube. We might just do YouTube to make it easy. And let's just say I was going to, I want to zoom back out, zoom to fit there. I'm going to put that there. How would I add the link? I would just put the link here. Let me grab one real quick. If you want to add a video cover image, then you would just need to upload one there. It has a few other settings here for the playing that you can go through. We would just need to hit save once we, once we were happy with it. I'm just going to go to a different example. And let's just say that the KitchenAid ad needed to have a link. So I clicked the link and it brought this little box on and then I will, let's say we were gonna link the logo. So I would just draw the box over the logo 
and then I can choose where I want the behavior to be. I, in this case, I would want it to open up a link. We would have it go to a URL and then I'm assuming this would just be like kitchenaid.com or something like uh, along those lines of where we would want this ad to go. And so you would just need to hit save and then that would save that link. And then we can see that our cursor changes when we hover over it. So that is how you would add a link. Let's say we were we had a PDF, but we were embellishing it and we needed to add more images. I would do the same. I could just click this image here and it actually allows you to upload or you can use examples. Let's just say I was going to add this image for whatever reason and it was just gonna be part of this ad. We could have it resized there and move it around. So that is how you would add an additional image. The same would go for text. If you needed to, to add or embellish text, then you could do, you could choose sort of the different fonts here. The, these are just styled text. You can do custom fonts if you needed to, if you needed to change the color so that we could read it, um, it could be something like that. So other features that you can do, there's elements that you can add. So they've got all of these and, and you can actually search for different ones. Pexels, uh, Pixabay, animated characters. These are all elements. You could do charts, you could do icons, you can do phones, slideshows. If you wanted to embed like a slideshow image, you could do that. Hotspots, you can add buttons. So let's say that we wanted to have you know a button so that you could go to uh, their web page then we could add that right in there if we needed to add shapes we could do that too there's different widgets that we have really the customization options are endless here so you can actually design you know if whatever images text that you need to add if you need to add videos they've got all of those including, you know, all of audio. I didn't think I mentioned that before. So if you needed to embed clips or audio clips into something, then that would be another thing that you could do. Once you're done editing, then that's when you can save here. And if we wanted to go back to the dashboard, we can see and there's our little new icon, that banner that we put on it. So this is something, if we need to edit this name, we can do that little pencil icon and we can just call it Bon Appetit, we can confirm. And then if we need to go back into the customization, which is actually the look and feel and functionality of the flipbook, edit the page would be the editor Then we can download or if we're ready to embed it on our website, we can share that way. I'll just open that up. You can see the final result of what we have here. Now, let me know what features that you find interesting. Is this something that you're gonna try? Is there a feature that you wish I would look more at? I can definitely do additional videos if there's specific features that you wanna look more into. This is the finished look of our flipbook. Let me know what you think. Are there features that you wanna learn more about? I can always do additional videos going over that content. This is kind of just a brief overview showing you what Flip HTML5 has to offer. If there's anything, like I said, that you wanna know more about, just leave those in the comments and we can see if it makes sense to do another video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.